First, I'd like to thank you, Professor Hans Bilsma, for joining us this morning, because it's great that you're going to answer some questions on biologics and biosimilars. Biologics are on the market, I think, now for more than 10 years. 20 years even. Even 20 years, even but 20 for years. rheumatic diseases, I think 10. 99. all right. So, Good. So, um, and now a new product has come into the market, biosimilars. So patients have got several questions. Yeah, I my can first, understand that. My first question really is, what is a biologic? Yeah, well, that's a very interesting uh, question. So the word biologic means that it deals with the way a new drug is produced. So it's produced in a biological way. It means that you need to start processes in the lab to make antibodies and then you generate them. And that's a really biological process. So that's why it's called a biological. So it's based on the knowledge we have about the pathology, so the way a disease like rheumatoid arthritis develops. We have understood in the last 20, 30 years what kind of cytokines are involved there. And since we know about those cytokines, we can produce in a biological setting antibodies against those cytokines. Mm -hmm. And that's why the word biological comes from. So it's quite a different process from all the other drugs, the pills that we know from the past. I know lots of patients uh, who take methotrexate. Is that also a biologic? No, methotrexate is not a biologic. Methotrexate is made from uh, in the old-fashioned way as we make drugs. But it's a good point that you mention methotrexate because we all know that combining methotrexate with a biological makes the <coughs> biological much more effective in two important ways. One way is that you have less damage of the joints if you combine a biological with methotrexate. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you are able to continue the biological for a much longer period of time than when you're using it on its own. Mm -hmm. So it's a very useful combination to have a combination of biological mm -hmm. with methotrexate. Well, when I go to my rheumatology clinic, I see that some patients are really confused because they think, well, I do not get a biologic and the other one gets one. So what are the criteria to get a biologic? Yeah, so that very much depends from country to country and from even within a country from hospital to hospital. There are uh, set certain protocols and certain rules. And unfortunately, many of those rules have been implemented because of the cost of a biological. So if you are in a more or less very rich country, it's in general easier to get a biological because the money is easier there than when you're in a more poorer country. So apart from that, of course, you need to have a clear disease activity. So if you don't have a very active disease, if you have a lot of pain and damage and fatigue, but no active inflammation, the biological will <coughs> not work because the biological works on the inflammation. And even you have patients that do not have much damage, do not have much fatigue, but have a lot of inflammation, they perhaps get a biological. So the biological is really aimed at inflammation. And then in addition to that, it depends on the possibilities of reimbursement in the specific area where you live, whether you get the biological at a certain moment in time. So as an example, we have a certain way that we uh, calculate the disease activity. And if you have, for instance, a number 5.2, you can get a biological in all the countries. If you have number 3.2 for a uh, disease activity, you might get a biological in Germany and the Netherlands, but not in the United Kingdom. So those rules also interfere with that. But if you're sitting in the same waiting room, you will have the same rules in that area, I suppose. And then it really will be about inflammation. Good. So now what has happened that I think, I don't know, for one or two years, biosimilars have really entered the market and uh, people are switched to biosimilars. Mm -hmm. This is also what we experience. So the point is, people say, mm, why biosimilar? It is only similar. Yeah, uh, I do yeah. not want to have a product that is similar. So what is the difference between a yeah. biological then and a biosimilar? Yeah. So first, we are very happy that we have the, the availability of biosimilars because it makes it possible for us to treat much <coughs> more people than we were able to do in the past. But if you really look at the word similar, it really means similar. It is similar in effect and it is similar in safety. So it is as good as. Similar is not a lower level. Similar is as good as. 
and we call it the biosimilar because it's based on an original product, but it's the still the same way. So perhaps it's important to, to realize for people, so we nearly have now for 20 years the biologicals, and in those 20 years the biologicals have been improved every time. So for instance, one of the TNF-alpha inhibitors has been changed over 40 times in the way from the start up till 2017. And every time it was a slight improvement. So what is now with the biosimilars? They are able to make use of all those improvements in those 40, 40 years. So in fact, some of the biosimilars might even be better than the originator because they have made use of all the knowledge that has been gathered in the last 20 years to improve a biological. Mm -hmm. But we don't call them biobetter, <coughs> we call them biosimilar. But if they have gone through the process which has very been put in place by the EMA, the European Medicine Agency, mm -hmm. or the FDA, the Federal Drug Authority, they have very strict rules, and if a product passes those rules, we can completely be sure that it is as effective as the original and as safe as the original. But it's not a second-hand car, <coughs> not at all. <coughs> Sorry, you partly answered my, my question because people ask, well, what about efficacy, safety, for example, is there also, you referred to EMA, is there also some evidence-based uh, material that proves that they are uh, as safe as the original product? Yeah. So EMA and FDA have very strict rules, so you have to <coughs> pass those rules, so there is real evidence that you are as effective and as safe. And of course, there is more experience with the originals, mm. but that's just a matter of time. But up to now, there are not um, biosimilars on the market for each of the um, original products. No. So where, where is switching possible? Switching is possible when, well, you have the rules about uh, protection of a drug. So if you have a new drug, it is protected for, depending on the country, between 18 and 20 years from the development onwards. And quite often the product is about seven or eight years in the pipeline before it comes to the market. So you have an actually product time of 12 years. If you have that time, you're not allowed to make a biosimilar because of patent rules. <coughs> and if a patent goes away, then you are able to produce a biosimilar or bring that on the market. Mm -hmm. So the timing is really based on the patent of the original drugs. There's another thing that worries a lot of patients. We see that more and more biosimilars are getting onto the market mm -hmm. now, and um, there is a, a price difference between the biosimilars and the biologics. Uh, in my country, for example, about 20%. So the point is, what people are scared of, that patients will be switched from bi one biosimilar mm -hmm. to another one. How do you see that? Yeah. So I, I don't think it would be a very good idea to go every year for the cheapest, because that's the background that many people think uh, they are doing. So if you have changed to a biosimilar, which is, I think, very common to be done uh, right now, it's better to stay on that biosimilar quite, for quite some time and not change every year. However, we have some experience from the original drugs. For instance, if we look to Norway, where they have every year they have a tender for all pharmaceutical companies to say, well, this is a TNF-alpha inhibitor that is allowed in Norway for the year 2015 or 2016, mm -hmm. and then everybody has to change to that specific one. Mm -hmm. So we have experience in changing these kind of drugs, but I don't think it's a very good idea. So it's an important step to go from originator to a biosimilar, but then probably stay on it for quite some time. Okay. And then if it happens, and it can happen, then it's very important to keep track of all those changes. So that you know this year uh, I had a biosimilar by company X and next year I have the biosimilar by company Y. So track means it would be good to have all these data in registries. Exactly. So, yeah? Yeah. All right. Good. Um, I've got a final question and I was checking, I must say. It is a more general question back. What are some adverse effects of biologics? That is, people who take such a drug, either mm -hmm. biosimilar or biologic, what have they got to consider, really? What have they got to be aware of? 
Yeah. So the, the most common adverse effect or side effect of a biological is getting more infections. And we can really understand that because rheumatoid arthritis is a disease of our immune system and we use our immune system also to protect us against infections. So in rheumatoid arthritis our immune system is working too hard and all the drugs we are using which are effective to reduce the activity of rheumatoid arthritis are reducing the activity of the immune system. And that makes automatically the chance that you get an infection larger. So in general we see twice as much as infections as we see without the biological. And many of them are able, we are able to treat them quite uh, normally, so it is not very difficult to treat them, but we have to be aware of them. All right. Thank you very much. I hope the information is really fruitful for our patients, and with the additional slides, I think, they can check things again. Thank you very much. S thank you very much. I think, I hope it, I made it clear to the people that biosimilars are really similar, as effective and as safe as the originators. So don't be afraid of using them because they are good. Thank you very much.